Hello and welcome to this Contabile walkthrough. Today I'm going to be covering Contabile's recording capabilities, recording audio, recording MIDI, playing it back, the auto record features, and pinned and unpinned recordings, plus a few settings and other bits and pieces. The recording capabilities in Contabile will center around this tab, the recordings panel, the record button, and this list of ports here, which lets you choose what to record. You would have seen in other videos I've covered uh, what ports are, and these are the way you configure Contabile to communicate with the rest of your environment. So you'll see that the ports listed here match the ports in the options pages here, here, and here. So you can create additional ports if you want to record extra channels. This is not a typical composition type recorder. It's designed specifically for performance recording. It's not designed for layered recording or loop type recording. It's strictly a performance recorder. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is record a simple MIDI recording. And to do that, I'm just going to select the on-screen keyboard here, which says this is the device I want to record. I can select multiple if I want, including MIDI and audio mixed set of ports. And the easiest way to do a recording is just to hit the record button and play something. Okay, stop. And you'll see the recording appears in the list. It shows how long it is here. We can right click on it and show in Windows Explorer and you'll see that there's this one MIDI recording here. Now, if I was to play this back, you'll hear this sound out as a piano because this is a MIDI recording, not an audio recording. Okay, you could load that into a MIDI sequencer and configure that and tweak it however you want. The other type of recording is obviously audio recording. So I'm going to record the output of this plugin, which is being sent to main speakers. I'm just going to choose main speakers here and the same thing, hit the record button. And stop. And if we look at the recording now, you'll see this is a WAV file. And if I play it, it sounds exactly like the plugin. Okay, we can record both audio and MIDI, as I said a moment ago. So if I record the on-screen keyboard and the main speakers, hit the record button, play something else. And stop. And look at the recording again. You'll see there's a MIDI file and a audio file. And they're basically the same thing. So the piano sound again in this one. And the synthesized sound in this one. Okay, if you're to choose multiple MIDI inputs, they get recorded to separate tracks in the MIDI file. If you select multiple audio ports, they will get uh, recorded as a series of different channels in the WAV file. And I'll probably cover that in a little bit. The next thing that you're going to want to do with the recorder is auto recording where Contabile will automatically start recording when it detects a signal. So if I turn the auto record feature on just by right clicking, auto record, and you can see auto record is indicated by this green indicator here. So if I was to just turn these speakers off and leave the on-screen keyboard selected, you'll see as soon as I start playing the recorder starts. <laughs> it'll stop by itself as well and you can see we've got basically the same thing here it's just a another recording okay the same thing happens for the audio recorders um, you can set them to automatically start and stop as well and I'll cover a little bit more of that now so in options in the recording page you see there's a few settings here the first is the location where the recording are going to be saved and that matches the directory that I had open a minute ago you can specify file name format, and there are a bunch of uh, variables here that you can use to configure the name of the files that will be generated. For instance, uh, you might group all of these by month. You can include directory names in here. So if I was to put, for example, to include the month name at the beginning and a backslash, and I'll just do a quick recording to show you.
you see it's put the month name in here and you'll also see that they're all grouped by month now. So each recording would go into its own month file. So the idea of this is that you can sort of set this stuff up, just leave it running there and sort of capture your inspiration whenever it strikes. Okay, just back into the options. The counter number here lets you just control this counter, set where you want it to start. Audio file format is kind of self-explanatory. There's a few different formats here. There's no MIDI file format at the moment. Currently the MIDI files are recorded in real time. There's no musical encoding of the uh, MIDI files. That's coming. It'll be coming soon. The next group here is to cover uh, auto recording. And this chooses which kinds of ports to detect input on before starting recording. And as well as this option, you need to have one of the appropriate ports enabled. So if you have MIDI input enabled here and you have one of the MIDI input ports enabled for recording, then when it detects input on one of those ports, it will start. So for example, uh, the auto record at the moment wouldn't start on the main speakers because I don't have audio output selected as starting the auto recorder. There's a few settings here for the durations of recordings. So this is how long to wait before stopping a recording. This one is automatically discard really short recording. So it, if you accidentally bump a note or you accidentally start the recorder, anything uh, less than that will be discarded. The audio noise threshold controls how much background noise the auto recorder will tolerate before it starts and stops recording. And then this last section covers pinned recordings. Pinned recordings, you'll notice these recordings each have a pin placed on them. And that indicates that you want to keep this recording. And what you can do is you can clear these pins and Contabile will automatically delete them after a number of days. And you can also say to automatically remove pinned recordings without deleting them. So that keeps your list clean if you've got a long list of recordings. The final option here, pinned new recordings. This, this could also be termed pessimistic or optimistic recording. And it just determines whether new recordings are automatically pinned and you need to go through and unpin the ones you don't want to keep or whether they're left unpinned to start with and you go through and pin the ones you do want to keep. That's the basics of the auto recording features. Okay, in, in this list here, there are a few more options. In the right click menu, you can rename and delete recordings. You can clear the list and you can also delete all the unpinned recordings. So if we didn't want these two, we can not only remove them from the list, but actually it, this will delete them as well. You can also delete a pinned recording explicitly and you can just clear the list, which clears out the list, but doesn't actually affect the recordings that were kept in the background. You can reorder them, and rename and show Windows Explorer. Okay, so there's some basic file management stuff built into this list here. Okay. The other thing that you probably want to want to be able to do is uh, playback. And the way you do that is by just inserting a media player. And then you can choose these recordings and say to add to media players one's playlist. And you'll see now that these files are listed out in here. And if I was to, these are all MIDI files. So I'm just going to connect the, I'm going to turn this off first. I'm going to connect the media players MIDI output back to that same plugin. And I'll also just quickly bring up the timeline panel, which shows these MIDI, event, MIDI events in this view here. So if I was to hit play, you can see that. So nice, I can load one of these other ones. Okay. So that's the basics of playback, and you can quickly just right-click any of these and add them to a media player. Okay, the other thing that I said I would cover, let me just close this, is um, multi-track recording, specifically for audio files. So one, one of the things with the audio ports is that these ports don't actually need to be connected to anything uh, to be able to record them. So if I was to add another, say, stereo output port and call it, just other, for example. I'll just assign this so that we can actually hear it as well. And then let's say, I'll get rid of this for now. Let me just add another plugin, a piano in this case. And I'm just going to set, quickly set up some, some routes here so that I can switch between them. Okay, so I've got 
MIDI channel 1 going to this plugin and channel 2 going to the other plugin and I'm going to change this to the other port as well. So that's going to send to the other output port. So these are going to separate outputs now and we can record them separately. So if I switch back to the recorder and say that I want to record, you see this other port has appeared here. I can record the other port and I can record the main speakers. And let me just clear this, get rid of those. Yes, and I'm going to start the recorder and I'm going to play some piano. And I'm going to play some of the other instrument. Okay, and then stop that. So if we look at this recording now, you'll see if I was to open this in Audacity, you'll see that oops, all of these channels are listed separately. So you can see we've got the two instruments on separate channels. Now, four channel audio recordings aren't a kind of standard format. So Audacity has split these into four individual recordings, but certainly they're usable in this format. You get the idea. Okay, so that's the audio recorder, the MIDI recorder, pinned recordings, unpinned recordings. There's some list management in here. We can choose which ports we want to record here. And that's about it. There's not much more to the recorder. Uh, there's going to be some improvements coming, um, specifically the ability to record MIDI files in musical time instead of uh, real-time encoding. And that will handle things like responding to tempo changes and recording tempos in the actual MIDI files. But that's coming soon. For now, that's it. And thanks for watching.